Welcome back, Warriors. I'm your quartermaster yet again, and it is great to see y'all. Welcome to the 21st video of my Weapon Workshop series. In this tutorial series, I look at all the relevant statistics for all the weapons we're supplied with for this 2042 conflict. Mind you, some of the info on these weapon crates ain't exactly accurate, so that's why I'm here to test them out for you and get the most accurate info available. On top of gathering info, I also give you all my three suggested builds taken to the field for dealing with all manner combat situations. Today, we'll be taking a look at our newest assault rifle, the RM-68. The RM-68 is an American rifle initially developed by General Dynamics before being taken on by Lone Star Future Weapons. Interestingly enough, it was a contender for the U.S. Army's Next Generation Squad Weapons Program but lost out to Six Hours MCX Spear, or as we know it in 2042, the M5A3 assault rifle. So right off the bat, this weapon is supposedly inferior to the M5A3. As you can see, this weapon is also ugly as sin, so maybe it lost on looks alone because stats-wise, there is no reason it should have lost. Regardless, this weapon is chambered in the funky-ass caliber of 6.8mm TVCM, which is a polymer-cased cartridge as opposed to a metallic casing. This makes the overall ammunition lighter while having an effective range and muzzle velocity greater than that of the 7.62 NATO round. However, I know a history lesson ain't what you're here for, I just thought it was interesting. Anywho, this weapon is unique in that it has a unique CCN suppressor brake attached as a default without being permanent as it is with the BSVM. This weapon has a base magazine of 20 standard issue rounds and uniquely does not have one round in the chamber. It also fires those 6.8mm rounds at a rate of fire of roughly 622 rounds per minute. There is also an option of a short barrel that gives us a rather substantial rate of fire boost, raising it up to 728 rounds per minute. In terms of damage ranges from 0 to 39 meters, we deal 28 damage to the body. Next, much like the AC-9 and the RPT-31, we have a huge second damage range. From 40 to 149 meters, we deal 22 damage per shot before we reach our minimum damage of 18 at 150 meters and beyond. Using these stats, we end up with a TTK between 289 and 482 milliseconds, but keep in mind, you'll basically never be getting that slowest TTK. Add in headshot can change these numbers to be between 193 and 386 milliseconds. Those are some crazy fast times for that first damage range. The second ammo type we have access to is the high powered rounds. These rounds hold the same amount of ammo as the base standard issue rounds, but they just have ever so slightly higher recoil, a barely slower rate of fire, and reload slightly slower and have an increased damage range and bullet velocity. Referring back to the rate of fire, compared to the standard issue rounds firing at 622 rounds per minute, the high powered rounds only drop to 618, a rate of fire that none of us will notice in the heat of battle. Regarding that increased damage range from 0 to 49 meters, we deal our maximum of 28 damage. That is a 25% increase to our damage range. After that, I wasn't able to reasonably find a damage range where it dropped below 22, and I went all the way out to 200 meters and beyond and still could not get it to drop. Needless to say, you won't be fighting at those ranges anyway. Using the stats we have, our TTK looks very similar, and the range is from 291 to 388, basically the same as the base ammo. And in a headshot, we'll change these to be between 194 and 291 milliseconds. The final ammo type we are issued are the close quarters rounds. These have all the benefits they usually have. The higher rate of fire, 664 in this case, increased ammo capacity and decreased recoil at the cost of reduced range and bullet velocity. In the case of the increased ammo capacity, these magazines carry 30 rounds, a 50% increase in our ammo capacity. However, looking at our ranges from 0 to 29 meters, we deal our base 28 damage. That is a 25% decrease in our maximum damage range. Next, from 30 to 99 meters, we deal 22 damage per shot. And lastly, from 100 meters and beyond, damage reaches 18 per shot. Using these stats, we end up with some slightly better TTK numbers, which can range from 271 to 452 milliseconds. And in headshot, we'll make these even quicker, landing between 181 and 362 milliseconds. Overall, the TTK values for all the ammo types are basically the same, all things considered. The final attachments we have that can affect our TTK are, oddly enough, suppressors. Despite the fact that the RM-68 comes with the default unique CCN suppressor, which is also attached on the short barrel, you also have the option to attach the 6KU and the wrap suppressor on this weapon as well. Now, why would you do this? Hell if I know. The weapon crate claims that the CCN suppressor reduces accuracy, but as you'll see later, removing it doesn't exactly make the weapon more accurate. So, getting back to the suppressors, using these, we have reduced damage at all ranges. From 0 to 39 meters, we deal only 25 damage, a loss that does not affect our TTK. Next, from 40 to 149 meters, damage drops to 20, again, with no TTK effect. 
Lastly, beyond that, 150 meters, damage drops to 16, meaning that we now need one more shot to kill at those longer ranges. Using these stats, we ended with a TTK between 289 and 579 milliseconds. And in the headshot, we'll change these to be between 193 and 482 milliseconds. I also figured it was worth testing and mentioning that using any of the other barrel attachments that are not suppressed do not affect your damage at all. The CCN suppressed barrel options showcase the maximum damage on this weapon. Only the regular suppressors affect our damage in any way. For the recoil testing with this weapon, I did all my tests at 20 meters. For the ammo, I fired 20 rounds each to better showcase the recoil comparison, seeing as the high-powered magazines only have 20 rounds. Speaking of the ammo comparisons, you can see that the base recoil does kind of kick fairly wide for the range. It isn't terrible, but I've seen better. However, one big thing to note is how hard it pulls to the right when firing. This may be caused by the weapon having those useless canted iron sights on the right side of the weapon. Anywho, the high-powered rounds definitely kick higher than the base ammo, but it's by no means out of control. And lastly, despite the higher rate of fire and the listed lower recoil, the close combat rounds still kick just about as high as the base ammo. Next up, we take a look at the recoil for the barrel options. For this test, I again fired the shots from 20 meters, but this go around, I used the base extended magazines, which have 30 rounds. Gives us a better visual on where the bullets go when being used in full auto. The 6KU suppressor, for some reason, has significantly lower the recoil than the base suppressor, despite the base suppressor claiming to have reduced recoil. The tactical compensator doesn't even kick as high as the base barrel, but it does seem to have a decently tightened up side to side bounce. The RCOM tactical muzzle brake doesn't seem to be functioning all that well on the RM68 as it's basically on par with the base height but with worse spread. The short barrel, for no discernible reason, has much less recoil than the base barrel and the champion muzzle brake is basically right there with it, but with worse spread. And the Warhawk compensator has pretty bad spread but also pretty low overall recoil as well. Looking at the underbarrel attachments, these underbarrels actually really affect our recoil. The BCG light grip, which is supposed to increase our ADS accuracy, also seems to really reduce our vertical recoil as well. It's by far the lowest of all the grips. The LWG grip also has low recoil, but wider spread, but as always, these are static fire tests, so the LWG will always look a little bit off. Even so, the Cobra Grip, while having a tighter bullet spread, basically has recoil on par with the base recoil. The Stoner Laser, which is supposed to reduce recoil, again seems to do nothing. This laser is fucked and we should send it back to the factory already. The Rattlesnake Grip, an attachment touted for improving hipfire accuracy, does what the label says and makes our ADS accuracy a good bit worse. Surprisingly, the MGL Laser actually improves our recoil both in overall magnitude and in our spread. Looking at the hipfire reticles, there is not a ton of deviation aside from, as per usual, the LS-1 laser. However, when doing the recoil plots, they were all basically the same, somehow. I did the hipfire recoil plots at 5 meters from the wall using all 30 rounds from the standard issue extended mags. The only real deviation here was the MGL laser, and that was because it pulled so hard to the right that it was worse than all the others. For this weapon, I actually have three builds again, just like with the AC-9. My first build, the Spectre, will make you a formidable fighter at close range and an exceptional flanker. We start out with the Fusion Hollow Sight because, well, we all know why. Next, I use the close quarters magazines for the extra ammo, the increased reload speed, and the faster rate of fire, and the reduced recoil. The BCG light grip is next for that increased ADS accuracy and reduced recoil. And we end with the short barrel for the increased rate of fire and the reduced recoil yet again. The Spectre will have you dropping bodies and burning through ammo in the blink of an eye. The combination of the CQC rounds and the short barrel have the Spectre pushing 800 rounds per minute. Combine this with the very low recoil of the bullet, short barrel, and BCG grip, and the four shot kill potential, and you easily have one of the deadliest weapons in this conflict out to 30 meters. Tag on the bonus of this weapon being suppressed, and you have a contender for the best weapon and best build in the entire battlefield. Even beyond the 30 meter range, you have out to 100 meters to get a 5 shot kill, something you can more than easily achieve with this build. The only downside of this build is that the fusion hollow can look off center because of the stupid canted irons on the right, but rest assured, where the dot sits is where your aim is. My second combo, the Revenant, looks to make you a high quality frontline fighter. The build starts off with an 8R hollow sight for the best combination of slight zoom and a clear sight picture. Next, we use these standard issue extended mags for a 50% increase in ammo at the cost of reload speed. Next, I use the 40mm frag launcher for crowd control capabilities before ending with the CCN suppressor brake. The Revenant gives you all the strengths of the base RM68 with nothing but benefits. The 8R hollow sight is still to this day, in my opinion, the best optic that HQ has offered us for this conflict. I stick with it for all my best builds, but do as you wish with the optics. 
The standard issue extended mags may have a very solid 4 shot kill range and a nearly impassable 5 shot kill range as well, making this a very consistent ammo to use. The extra 10 bullets helps you not have to reload as often and the 40mm frag launcher is a bit different coming from your quartermaster, but given the limited ammo capacity of this weapon and the tight engagements you may find yourself in on flashpoint and other fronts, that little extra oomph can really come in handy to clear a hallway or take out multiple weakened enemies at once. You can certainly make this build work at all ranges, but mid range is where it excels. My final build is made to be used as a DMR of sorts. Mirage starts out with the Bravo 3x Octave for a great zoom without too much peripheral blockage. Next I use the high powered magazines for some increased bullet velocity and damage range at the cost of reload speed and some recoil control. Next I use the Cobra Grip for increased static accuracy at the cost of mobile accuracy and I end with a 6KU suppressor for the reduced recoil and increased accuracy at the cost of damage. Now I hear y'all now, why the hell would you use the 6KU suppressor over the default one? Well, could I kindly refer you back to the recoil plots yet again. The 6KU has less recoil and the damage drop at close and mid-range is not enough to affect our TTK at all. Combine that with the fact that the high powered rounds don't leave their medium damage range out to and past 200 meters and this downside becomes non-existent. You gain all the recoil benefits with none of the downsides. Mirage is built more as a DMR that can be turned full auto if it needs to be. The 4 shot kill range extends out to about 50 meters which is a very far range for such a high damage output. In this range, using the enhanced zoom of the Bravo 3 times optic, you should be able to fairly easily 2 tap headshot enemies and remove them very quickly, all while remaining stealthy. Another benefit of the Bravo 3 times is that it doesn't produce a scope glint, so if you're concealed well enough, your enemies will have a hell of a time finding their assailant. The high power magazines may not have a ton of ammo, but they fire nearly as fast as the base mags and don't reload that much slower either. They have a great high powered option, something a lot of other weapons don't seem to have. If you need a strong long range assault rifle option, then the Mirage is for you. And there you have it folks, all the stats you need to know and the best builds to properly utilize your powerful, ugly American RM-68. My first build, the Spectre, will have you destroying the enemy up close through sheer shot power and volume of fire. The Revenant will, in the right hands, basically outshoot anything on the front lines that the enemy will throw your way. It's a mid-range melt machine. And for when you want to take the stealth fighting out even further, utilize the Mirage to make the most out of this weapon's power, range, and rate of fire. I did my best to get the most accurate stats on my personal test on this weapon on the orbital test and range. So with that, what do y'all think of the RM-68? Is it a contender for the best weapon in this conflict as I claim it to be, or have I just been out in the sun too long? Let me know down below. I certainly think this weapon rivals, if not surpasses, the BSVM in terms of being the best anti-infantry rifle in this conflict, and that is saying something. And so if I did a good job today with this briefing, be sure to leave me a like and subscription to show the major that you want more statistical briefings just like this one. And with that, I've been your quartermaster, and until next time, I will see you later.